Behind me you will see the Kingsmore Christian Centre, once called the Kingsmore Methodist Church. Now it was here that the great move of God's Holy Spirit occurred in this village in the 1970s. The neighbouring houses, bungalows and the garage next door to the chapel where the people were converted to Christ. It was here that we heard the story, the remarkable story of the healing, the restoration of Stephen King. Stephen King uh, was from the Midlands, but they came to live here in this part of the village of Kilgetty. Stephen was born without a right hip socket, and we saw him early on in this wonderful testimony film, walking on the beach, normal and well, at 41 years of age. We first met when he was but five years of age, and it was in that situation that the miracle of God took place. And when I say a miracle of God, I don't use that term lightly. I use it with an awesome recognition that it was God's power that brought this amazing thing to, to, to reality. Stephen was born without a right hip socket. Therefore, he was lame, falling over, and his mother was a an orthopedic state registered nurse and so it was rather remarkable that she should apply to us for prayer for her son to be healed. Uh, in the process of time uh, she received from us a, a blessed handkerchief like Paul used in Acts chapter 19 verses 11 and 12. Sometimes I've been criticised for this side of my ministry. But this is exactly what happened. Stephen's mother, Anne, while Stephen was asleep in bed, laid this handkerchief in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ upon Stephen's hip area. She actually felt with her hand a movement that was totally supernatural and discovered the next morning that Stephen had a perfectly fitted socket, a hip socket. And she found this out because Stephen was jumping up and down on the bed. Eventually, to prove to herself that this had taken place, she put her little lad out on the outside of the house with a, a small football. He kicked it, played with it, ran up and down, never fell over. She was so intrigued by what had happened to her son that she went to the orthopaedic hospital and had Stephen's hip x-rayed. It had been x-rayed just before that because they were talking about a pending operation. And to her amazement and to the amazement of the staff in that hospital, it turned out that the two x-rays taken only a few months apart one showed the serious defect and the other showed a perfectly formed right hip socket. Who could have put that there? Certainly not any human because there was no operation performed. The Lord God himself had compassion upon Stephen and gave him a brand new right hip socket. But that was 37 or so years ago. Recently, BBC Cardiff, who actually filmed that amazing testimony in 1974, suddenly found the former film. They were so intrigued that they contacted me by phone and asked if I would uh, look to see if Stephen was still alive. After all, five years and 36 uh, 37 years, just over 40 years Stephen would be. In a most amazing manner, they discovered him here in Saundersfoot, which is close to Kilgetty. So this morning, as you saw, the BBC Cardiff television film unit was in operation, taking the account of, all, of the story that I've just shared with you. I met up with Stephen for the first time in nearly 
what, 36, 37 years. We embraced one another on the beach and shared lovely Christian fellowship together. His hip has caused no problem the whole of his life and he's enjoyed full health until this very day. We give God all the praise and all the glory for this wonderful thing that's happened. Stephen is a dedicated Christian. He loves the Lord with all his heart and to be with him again, this time as a grown man and not a five-year-old boy, was a sheer joy for me personally and for my staff and team who came with me. So we've put this on a separate record. But very soon, no doubt, the story of Stephen King's amazing miracle will be on BBC television. Perhaps first in Wales, well, no doubt in Wales, and then perhaps uh, in, in other forms as well. We, you should have no doubt whatsoever that our wonderful God is still working miracles today as he did in the days of Jesus 2,000 years ago. In fact, in Tenby, which is just a little way from here, young Matthew was miraculously healed also. He, had, he was born without any hair cells on his body. And uh, he came with his grandmother to our special service at Summerhill, not far from this place, and he was prayed for. That little lad Matthew had God-given faith, I'm sure. Because for eight weeks, this is what he did after he was prayed for. His mum and dad were hoteliers, so they were quite wealthy. They'd taken him in that poor condition to uh, Austria and Italy and other continental countries to see if they could find a cure for him. But they were told on each occasion, how can your son grow hair if there are no hair cells to grow in his body? And yet, eight weeks on from when he was prayed for, each day he would give thanks to Jesus. He never doubted. He never questioned God. He just said, thank you, Lord. I know you're going to do this wonderful thing for me. I believe that the hair cells are there and they're growing. And they did grow. And one morning they noticed soft down on little Matthew's head. They couldn't, they tried to remove it, but they couldn't because it was the beginning of a new beautiful head of air, eyelashes and eyebrows which he'd never had. And they grew to perfection. And we thank God that again, he had compassion on a little child. And there's no telling how far that testimony has gone. And again, we give to God all the praise and the glory. As Stuart said a little while ago, Jesus is alive. He's risen. He's back from the dead and he's still with us. He promised where you gather in my name, I'll come among you and manifest my power and glory. We only have to believe. The first essential, of course, is to recognize that we need a living, ongoing, powerful relationship with him. We need to know him, the reality of his presence and power. And it's my sincere prayer that you will call upon him in any hour of real trouble but first, we must get the things out of our lives that are displeasing to God. We must repent and be sincere. But God has promised to forgive us if we will confess our sins and put our lives right with him. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, will cleanse us from all sin. We can make a brand new start in life. We can be transformed inwardly by the grace of God. It's time for us to open our lives to the living Christ. He wants to relive his life in us. He wants to love through us. He wants to heal through us. He wants to save through us. And he's longing for that opportunity. So pray the sinner's prayer. Call upon the name of Jesus to be saved. And he will save you. And he will become real to you, a friend indeed who will stick closer than any brother. Just drop me a line to Peter Scoven Ministries, number 150, Chats with Drive, Mansfield Knots, NG18 Claw, 4QX, and I'll be pleased to send you either a CD or a DVD, but certainly one of my testimony books. 
it'll encourage your faith and help you to see that Christianity is not just a religion. It's a living, vital relationship with God's Son, Jesus Christ, the Lord. God bless you. and people actually on the outside couldn't get in. But that was the feature.